What does being a Power Query Pro have to do with preparing for the looming recession? Well, the data shows that approximately 90% of investors are still losing money in the stock market. But being a Power Query Pro, you can reduce this by getting dynamic updates of your stocks directly from the web into Excel, which you can then instantly analyze and empower your decision making. So let's see how we can do this. We're going to use the S&P 500 values from this website. And as we want this to be dynamic, we want our values to update directly from this website. So let's copy the URL. Then in a blank workbook, click on data from web and let's paste the URL that we copied here and click on OK. The first time that you connect, an Access Web Content dialog box will pop up, but as I've already connected, it's not going to show for me. The steps to connect to the Access Web Content dialog box are on the screen now. So once you've connected to that dialog box, this Navigator screen will pop up, and here is where we select the table that we require, which is this table 0 here. And here in the preview pane, we can see that it has all the S&P 500 data that we need. Let's click on transform data. Let's remove the change type step. Next, let's select the date column and hold down the control key and select the close column. Right click and select remove other columns, as these are the only two columns that we need for our query. Next, we need to change our data type for our closing values to currency. But we get this error here. We couldn't convert to number. It's quite easy to fix. Let's remove the change type step. The reason for this error is due to the difference in regional settings. Yahoo Finance's settings are set for the US, which uses a dot as a decimal, whereas the country that I'm in uses a comma as a decimal. So we need to change the regional settings for this query to that of the US. Click on this ABC icon and click on Using Locale, and here we can see that the data type is currently text, and the locale is English South Africa. Let's change text to currency and locale to English United States, as that is the origin of our source data. Let's click on OK, and now Power Query correctly displays our currency in the same format as my computer's regional settings. We have a comma as a decimal and no longer any errors. If you would like to learn more on these regional settings errors, please check out this video here. The link is in the description also. Next, let's change our date column to a date type and let's sort our dates in ascending order. Next, in the add column tab, click on index and click on from zero. And let's do that again, but this time click on from one. These two columns are going to help us merge this query with itself. Just stick with me. You will see where I'm going with this. In the Home tab, click on Merge Queries and click on Merge Queries. Here is where we can select our tables to merge. As we only have our S&P 500 table, it will be our primary and secondary table. Then the columns we want to match are our first index column that starts at zero in our primary table and then click on the second index column that starts at one in our secondary table. And we get this column with a list of tables that are from our secondary table. Let's expand our table. Let's only have our close column selected as this is the only column that we require from our secondary table. And we now have our current and previous days close on the same row. Next, let's select the close column and hold down the control key and select the close dot one column. Then in the add column tab, click on standard and click on subtract. And we now have the difference in our closing values. Let's select our date, close and subtraction columns, right click and select remove other columns. Let's rename subtraction to variance and right click on the variance column and select replace values. The value to find will be null and we want to replace this with zero. As this is the S&P 500, we will definitely be interested in the latest values. So let's click on the drop down here in the date column and sort by descending. And let's send this back to Excel. Now to create these arrow icons, select your data in the variance column and in the home tab, click on the conditional formatting drop down and go down to icon sets and click on more rules. The rule type that we want is this first one here format all cells based on their cell values. 
the format style is icon sets. And the icon style that we require are these three arrow icons. Next, let's change the type to number. And the rules that we require are as follows. We want the green increase arrow to display when values are more than or equal to 0, 1. Then the no change arrow needs to display when values are less than 0, 1 and more than or equal to 0. And the red decrease arrow to display when values are less than 0. And let's click on OK. And we have all our arrow icons. Then to create our S&P 500 graph, let's go back to our query editor and let's right click on our S&P 500 variances query and click on reference. And let's rename this query to S&P 500 graph data as we're going to use this to create our graph. Next, click on the date column and in the add column tab, click on the drop down for date and go to month and select name of month. And we have a new column showing our month names. Let's send this back to Excel, then insert the chart type that you want. I use the area chart. If you would like all the format settings for the chart, please download the practice file in the description box below. The markets have closed, so let's hit refresh and our values update automatically. And let's check out Yahoo Finance's website and our values agree. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to know when the next video in the series will be released.